Hey reviewers and welcome back to the channel and I hope you guys have been well. And if you're new here, my name is Jonathan and welcome to Reviews. Today we're doing the first of our videos for Lucas Mercedes-Benz of Eastbourne, the brand new, all new Mercedes EQA 250. Let's take a closer look. The Mercedes EQA is the smallest in their SUV range. However, in terms of equipment, it has one of the largest selections of features going. Pricing in the UK starts from £45,645 and that's for the EQA 250 Sport and it goes up to £54,145 for the range topping 4 EQA 350 AMG Line Premium. Looking at the outside of the car, it's quite understated but with a premium look and feel. And being the EQA, there are subtle design cues to tell them apart from other models, such as the LED light bars on the front and rear of the car, the badging and the streamlined arrows of the bumpers. The EQA comes with high performance LED adaptive lighting as standard, with high beam assist included on all models and they also have front and rear parking sensors with a high definition reversing camera too. You get 18 inch wheels on the Sport and 19 inch wheels on the AMG Line Premium, all of which carry on the aerodynamic concept of the EQA. All of the electric motors on the Mercedes EQA are 66.5 kWh and the 0-60 times vary from 8.9 seconds on the 250 model to just 6 seconds on the EQA 350. The performance figures start from 190 horsepower and 375 newton meters of torque on the EQA 250 and up to a massive 292 horsepower with 520 newton meters of torque on the EQA 350 version. They can be charged at a maximum of 100 kilowatts and at that charge rate you'll get from 10% to 80% in about 30 minutes. Full charge should provide you with a real world range of between 220 and 260 miles. Speaking of charging, if you're looking to invest in a new electric vehicle, you can get grants for a home-based charging system such as the BP Pulse, and prices start from as low as £525 in the UK, however prices can change, so do check at your time of purchase. The BP Pulse is a 7kW charging system, and that means you're looking at around 11 hours for a full overnight charge. Staying with the theme of charging, range anxiety is something I hear lots about when speaking of electric vehicles, and some might be worried about not being able to find a charging point. For those who have this concern, you'll be pleased to know that the Mercedes EQA has you covered, with the ability to find and take you to the nearest charging point, and also you can use the apps such as Mercedes Me or BP Pulse to make this even easier. It's also good to know that there are now more charging points in the UK than there are petrol stations and less vehicles demanding them, so finding one really is no bother at all. You can even plan a long journey and the infotainment system can program in natural brakes with charging points included on the way and a Mercedes Me charge card makes payment and billing even easier as you can use one card to pretty much cover everything. Now granted it's not a large vehicle and some compromises have been made to adapt the platform to electric such as raising the floor slightly but we should bear in mind that this is a compact SUV and probably more suited to smaller families or people couples with active lifestyles. Boot space starts at 340 litres and with the seats down this can be expanded up to 1320 litres. You also have a handy storage space underneath the boot floor to store your charging cables as well. Space in the rear is actually quite generous, however for tall people it might be a tight squeeze. You will be pleased to hear though that if you are tall like myself then space in the front cabin is actually great and it feels as big as a large family saloon with plenty of headroom as well. You've got Isofix in the rear for child seats and the fit and finish of the seats in general is very good as you would come to expect from Mercedes. The only point that came to mind for me is they could have included a full electric seat for the driver as standard. The build quality of the cabin and dash are right up there with the very best with high quality materials and metals being used. Fit and finish is excellent and everything has a valuable feel to it. This brings me on to the tech, safety and infotainment. Safety first. The EQA meets and exceeds most modern safety standards and comes with a generous amount of equipment and features even from the base model. In fact, there really isn't much to add at all. Traction control and ABS are of course present, however you do get blind spot monitoring, active braking and active lane assist. You also get speed limit warnings, speed limit assistant, parking sensors front and rear and a high definition reversing camera, airbags all round and even ones to protect your knees. The Keyless Go Comfort Package being the only real safety feature you'd want to add and you'll get those anyway if you go for the AMG Line Premium Trim, more on those in a moment. This brings us on to technology and infotainment and this in my opinion is where the Mercedes and the EQA really shines. The main infotainment system is truly something to behold, it looks like one huge screen when in fact it's actually two ten and a quarter screens. 
It's finished superbly, and although the system isn't new for the EQA, the software that runs it is bespoke due to this vehicle being all electric. Now I'm likely to do a deep dive video explaining all that it can do separately, as with the various menus and features, it would make this video about 20 minutes longer at least. However, let's cover a few of the key features that you want to know about now. Firstly, it can be controlled in four different ways, via the multifunction steering wheel with keys and touchpads, down on the main center console, using as a touchscreen, or even using the voice control Hey Mercedes. Now don't let any of this worry you as it's actually incredibly easy to use. The screen has a clean and clear layout using a high definition TFT setup. It's very responsive and comes with smartphone integration and Bluetooth connectivity, satellite navigation and built-in compatibility for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard. DAB and a high quality Mercedes-Benz sound system are also included. You also have the Mercedes Me app that provides vehicle information, location, remote locking, charge point locations and much more. There is a huge amount of information on the vehicle and settings, all of which can be adjusted to suit your needs. In terms of technology, you have switchable driver modes to provide more comfort, economy or sportiness to your journey. Cruise control and seamless acceleration are provided through a single speed automatic drivetrain. You get ambient lighting as standard, which can also be controlled via the voice control system along with many other features. You get heated seats and the option to have a wireless charging tray, which some trim levels have included. In the center dash, you also have a Thermotronic automatic climate control system. There are three trim levels to choose from, Sport, AMG Line and AMG Line Premium. The Sport is the base model and comes with pretty much all that I mentioned already, including the heated leather seats. AMG Line brings with it all of the AMG body styling, seats, wheels and a sporty flat bottom multifunction steering wheel. AMG Line Premium adds the 19 inch AMG wheels, the panoramic sunroof, the keyless go comfort package, the wireless charging tray and an upgraded speaker system for that extra boom. There's a great range of colours to choose from, some of them are free, some of them are a little bit more, some of them are a little bit more special. Either way, there is something for everybody and I'll put them on the screen now for you to have a look. Now of course there are going to be many features not mentioned for time's sake and I would recommend downloading the Mercedes e-brochure from the website to see a full comparison. One massive takeaway from all of this before we get into the drive is that with this electric vehicle there is no road tax to mention at all. In fact, bearing in mind that some people pay £490 per year for the first five years for luxury car tax, if you're looking at this market you could save a small fortune. So that about wraps up our main facts and information section. What I'm going to do next is just show you a short video on me charging the vehicle, which was the first time for me ever. If you've got any questions or you'd like to know more before we get into the drive, let me know in the comments section below. Right, so we've stopped um, our location with the BP Pulse charging socket. Now what I want to do is just basically try this. And for me, it's actually the first time ever doing this. But I've shown some bits earlier at the garage, so I want to try and put them into practice. What you can also do, if you click on EQ, huh. Yeah, so what you can also do is search for additional ones using Hey Mercedes and the MBUX system. Another thing you can do, if you get the BP Pulse app, you want to find local pulse points, then what you need to do is literally open up the app, find one, which is where we are right now, and we click on that, and use pulse point. It's found the ID because I clicked directly on it. If you don't, it's actually on the charging point itself. So the next step, Let's give this a go because I've not done it before. <laughs> I think I'm going to push that for warm batteries for charging. Let's give it a whirl. I was parked literally miles away. So, one of those. And <clears throat> this is meant to be seven kilowatt, I believe. So, we're going to find all the cables needed for that. Yeah. <laughs> This is as much of an experiment for me as it is for you all. Ha. Right, winner, winner. Take that off. Lift that up. Right, so that's all plugged in. Now, it was probably me being a bit impatient, but I moved it from that socket to that socket, and I just waited a little bit longer. Ah, okay. So now that's gone green, and I heard a noise in here. I think it's doing something now. Let's hear a minute ago. Aha, okay, there you go. 
Right, so what you missed, because I was faffing around changing the other one, um, this was on 64 and it's now giving us charge state, telling us it'll be 100% at 522. Now, it's only a 7.4 kilowatt that it's charging at the moment, so obviously it's gonna take a while. Um, I'm not gonna be staying here for the whole thing, I just wanted to try and demo it, but it's all working. Might not have been the slickest way of doing it, but <laughs> it was my first time. Um, in fact, my phone did a ping as well. So, uh, there we go. Charging process started successfully. Right, okay, well there you go, on to a winner. Maybe this one hadn't been used for a while. Maybe it took a bit of time to kind of get it working, but yeah, worked in the end. That's <laughs> my first time doing it. Car's charging, job's a good one. So other than that, I'm gonna go and get myself a Costa. I'll be back in a minute. Right then gang, bit of a coffee, bit of a top up on the charge as well. Let's take it for a proper drive, put it through its paces and test it in practice. Let's go. Right, so everything's now on as you can see. So what I'm gonna do to change your drive mode, the stalk's just on the right hand side of the steering wheel. Put on the brake, I'm gonna tap that down. That's now gone into drive. And we've got the green ready, so everything is good to go. <laughs> Let's go. Woo! Now, it goes without saying, but one of the first things you notice is just how quiet it is in here. How quiet in the cabin. Now, of course, Mercedes did a lot of work on soundproofing as well, but the main reason for this is because you don't have a combustion engine, right? Very little moving parts. In fact, there isn't even a, a gearbox as such on this. You just put it into drive. All right, away we go. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a mixture of driving speeds and surfaces, a bit of town driving as well. And I'm gonna go through the different modes and show you how that affects the driving of this car and the style. Alrighty, so I showed you in the cuts, but I'll just show it again now. The drive selector is just down in the center console on your left. Now you've got four main modes to choose from. You've got individual, sport, comfort, and eco. And individual is pretty much what it says on the tin. You can kind of tweak it and make it your own. The one I like the most for me personally was sport, because the minute you put it into it, the go pedal, the throttle if you want to call it that, that's very responsive now, so it picks up really, really quickly. And I just like that, I like the responsiveness of it. If you put it into the comfort mode, it just softens it off a little bit, so it's all about the feel really, and the way the software manipulates the driving experience. So if I put my foot down, it's just not quite as quick, not quite as harsh on acceleration. Next one down, if you put it into eco, now this is where the vehicle can actually limit the speed. Now, interestingly, this is a 60 down here, but the car thinks it's 40. So what it was doing, it was trying to reduce the speed of the car. But in eco mode, you can put your foot down a little bit more and just kind of bypass that system. So if I put my foot down in eco, see it's smooth, but it's not as quick, not as punchy. So that's how you select the modes and that's the difference between them. I definitely prefer sport mode. That's the most responsive and I just get the enjoyment from it. Of course, if you're running in sport, you risk reducing your potential mileage, your potential range. So in terms of ergonomics then, just while we're behind this van, now I'm six foot four and I did think going into this that because this is the smaller of the Mercedes SUVs that I would have not enough room in here. And obviously I'm a big guy as well. I've still got plenty of headroom, so it doesn't feel cramped. I've got nothing right around my head either, because sometimes these bits encroach, but no, I've got plenty of room here, plenty of room for my legs. And in fact, I can put the seat back quite a long way if I wanted to as well. So yeah, very, very comfortable for taller people. And if you look at the back, I haven't changed it. I'll do those cuts again. There is still plenty of room for people in the back. The only compromise due to the fact of stowing the batteries and raising that floor up is you don't have quite as much space for passengers in the back. So we're coming to a 30 now and yeah, so far it's just really, really comfortable. Uh, suspension's even in a kind of comfort mode as well. Although the AMG with the bigger wheels, the 19s, might give you a slightly harsher ride. But so far, it's so good. So this is now coming into a 20 and the cameras and systems on here is picked up as a 20, so you can see on the dash there now. And it's good to know that even as an entry-level car, you've got 
you know, active safety systems working for you, like the one I just mentioned, but also blind spot monitoring as well. And even the base car, the Sport, has a reversing camera as well. I'm gonna demo that just for you now. So indicate in as you would, put it into reverse. You hear a bit of a clunk and then there's the camera. So it's now come up. So I'm gonna use both of those, get into this space quickly using the camera. And there we go, nice and easy. I'm not gonna stay here because it's just a quick one to get into. So push down for drive, indicate out, and away we go. Now there's a good reason I chose this route as well because right here, these Maresfield bumps are quite a good indication of how good the suspension is on a car. And so far it handled that pretty well. What I really like as well about electric vehicles in town driving is the responsiveness because there is no gear change. You don't have to worry about kind of building a car up or building boost or anything along those lines. Literally just put your foot down and they take off straight away. So it's good for kind of nipping around town, but also it's the best type of economy you can find. So town driving and comfort, yeah, really, really good. Pedestrian safety there as well for you. So yeah, very, very cool. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go back that way to the national speed limit areas and I'm going to show you just how quick this can accelerate. Because although the indicative times are 8.9 to 60, it's very rare that you're going to be having a drag race with anybody up to 60. What you're probably more likely going to be doing is going from say 20 to 60 or 20 to 70 as you accelerate onto national speed limits, motorways, that kind of stuff. And that's where this car excels because as I understand it, the torque figure is 375 newton meters, and the car makes a theoretical 190 horsepower from the single electric motor. So this is a 60, so 35 to 60, put your foot down, 40, 50, and there's 60, 62 in fact, right? Now I would say that accelerates probably far quicker than something like a Qashqai 1.3, and it's effortless as well, right? So no gear changes, instant power, instant torque and it gives you great confidence to do those kind of things those kind of maneuvers because you might not be driving an automatic vehicle you know you might not be used to it so this vehicle takes care of everything for you without any faff of gear changes don't have to worry about making sure you're in the right gear this is just literally go one speed i'm going nice and easy what I also like is how clear that MBUX screen is. In fact, it's two screens, isn't it? So 10 inch on either side and you can control them from the steering wheel. So this little scroll button here controls the left side. This one controls the right. And on the left side, that's basically sat nav and vehicle information. On the right hand side, that's your driver focused information. But even your sat nav can be put into that middle there. So you don't have to glance across to see what you're doing. Some other great features that you've got in this vehicle is cruise control, but also the regenerative braking. Now, traditionally, in like a normal Mercedes, these pedals here would be for changing your gears up and down. But because this is EV and doesn't have a gearbox to speak of, what it does is actually change how much or how fierce the brake regeneration is. So the left side here can make it harder. So effectively, it's almost like the brakes are on a little bit. And the right hand side can make it coast more. And I believe there's four different levels. So if I push the right one once, that's D plus. Now what you'll find is, I'm gonna take my foot off there, the vehicle will coast a lot more, okay? If I put it back down to drive, you can immediately feel there's a bit more resistance there. Left side again, D minus. Wow, can you see the difference there? That's almost like the brakes are on. Now there is a D minus minus, and I wanna make sure <laughs> there's no one behind us when I do it. And this is national speed limit. So D minus minus. Now I am at 60 miles an hour. Wow, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. 40 miles an hour. That's how quickly we just slowed down, 34 even. Now, it's up to you. I would probably personally rather have minimal braking regeneration on because it's gonna happen anyway. And when you do, you see the dial go around. But the whole point of this car is to make it a smooth, an economical experience and if you are ultimately forcing the car to slow down all the time you're going to have to put in a similar amount of power to get you going again at points so i think coasting for me 
is the best choice. Now I mentioned the trim, so of course you've got the Sport model, you've got the AMG line, and you've got the AMG line premium. Now we're in the AMG line, so we've got the AMG style and we've got the 18 inch wheels. If you go up again to the premium, what we would have got is that panoramic roof, 19 inch wheels, an upgraded speaker system as well, and a wireless charging tray. Now, I think all of those things are actually pretty useful, and I think having the panoramic roof on this car would brighten it up a little bit in here. Not that it's too dark, but I think it would make it even nicer. Now, in addition to the trim levels, you've also got, I guess, power plant options, right? Because they're not engines anymore. So you've got the 300. Now, the 300, instead of going for the 250, means that you get 228 horsepower and it brings it up to 60 time down. You also get four wheel drive as well, or four Matic. Now, if you go up to the 350, what you'll actually get is a 0 to 60 time of around six seconds and it's 292 horsepower. Now, of course, Teslas of this world have really taken everyone by storm about how quick they can go, but it's worth bearing in mind, if you're going for an electric vehicle and then also focusing on how quick they can go, maybe there's a little bit of a conflict there because, of course, if you're gonna put your foot down and try and reach those speeds all the time, you're gonna burn through your electricity. Now, another great feature on the electronic side of it is the voice activation system. So I'm just gonna try this now because you've got ambient lighting in here. So, hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Change lighting to red. Okay, I'm changing the color. There you go. So there's a minor delay in it happening, but now all of the ambient lighting has gone to red. Pretty cool feature, right? Something you can show people when you're going out. Now I mentioned the trackpads here so you can change your screens or the MBUX system. What you've also got is a trackpad down here in the centre console and in addition to that you've also got touch screen here as well. To be completely honest with you the system alone could do with its own video so if you'd like to see that in much more detail and we can go through everything all of the menu features can you let me know in the comments section and I'll work it out for you. Now moving on to comfort then having driven the car for about an hour all in all I have to say, for a big guy and a tall guy, it's a really great place to be. Um, I didn't think it would be as comfortable as it is, being that I am a bigger chap, but actually, they've got loads of room in here and the seat's plenty comfortable. Now, bear in mind, this is the AMG Sport seats as well. Um, so even though they are a bit sportier and I'm a big person, things are actually really good. Now, I mentioned it before, so even though this is the smaller of the SUV siblings in the Mercedes range, I don't think then it's really lacking in features or technology. What do you think? I think it's built really well. I think the system as a whole is fantastic. I'd probably say when you get used to it, it might be one of the best ones on the market. Now, I drive a 5 Series and it's a 5 Series estate as well. In terms of room for a driver, I've got loads of room. And in terms of the technology, I would say it surpasses that. Now, a little bit of handling, of course, I'm not going to go too fast, but for a vehicle that weighs over two tons with all of those batteries in there, it handles pretty well. A sports car it isn't, but for a small SUV, it's good fun. Now I'm just gonna test the brakes a little bit here. I mentioned they're pretty good. What you do find is there is an initial bite there for the regeneration, and when you get used to that, the brakes are actually fantastic. You just need a bit of a lighter touch. I think for most people, to be fair, this vehicle is gonna tick a lot of boxes. The only real compromise I can see, just being honest with you, is for larger families, perhaps the back isn't as accommodating as you might want it to be, neither is the boot space, but then again, this isn't aimed at larger families. I think if you're gonna go for that, you might look at an EQC. I'll tell you what, when you take this onto country roads, this is where it really comes into its own. Can you hear that? Just whispers, whispers of background noise. And that's what makes this so effortless and such a pleasure to drive. Now, I appreciate it might not be the cheapest in its class, but if you look at its competitors, then you look at the build quality and the way that this is all put together, I think Mercedes has got a real winner here. I think it's priced well. I think it's got all the technology and safety features you could want. It handles very, very well. You've got lots of fast charging options available to you, and the range is pretty decent. Now, being honest about the range, we started the day with near enough 200. I know I haven't done 45 miles, but it is kind of eking down a little bit. Now, I know I put my foot down a tiny bit, but we're down to 145 miles. So if it was fully charged at 100%, because it wasn't when we left, I think in the real world, you're probably gonna be looking at 
more like 220 out of a full charge, 100%. Which for most people, that's really, really good. And here's an interesting fact that I learned today. There are now more charging points in the UK than there are petrol stations. Just let that sink in for a minute. Now, there is an argument as to whether we are ready in this country for everyone to go EV. Of course, I get that. But at the moment, if you were thinking of it and you were worried that there's not enough around, I live in a, you know, a country type town and there's plenty around where I am and they weren't crowded, they weren't overused. So if you need to get there, you need to get a charge, there's always going to be one available to you either by using the Mercedes Me Charge application, using the MBUX system or even using something like BP Pulse application. Another good one I found out about today is called Zap Maps as well and that's actually run more by users than a corporate company so everyone kind of puts their input in and when they find a charging station they leave feedback about that charging station so was it in good condition what was the speed of the charge was it easy to use and how much did it cost right i'm going to take this vehicle for a proper drive but before we go big thank you again to lookers mercedes for lending me this vehicle for review i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did give it a thumbs up because that really helps me and let me know what you think in the comment section below and which vehicles would you like to see next so thanks very much for watching and as always stay safe have fun and i'll see you on the next